everyone and welcome to a new discussion which is on laws of radiation and their relevance in remote sensing and uh, as you know that uh, every whatever the wave propagation is there of EMS, uh, EM waves uh, which follows certain laws or uh, this is how the understanding has uh, been developed. So whatever is uh, uh, you know uh, in different parts of EM spectrum whatever the waves are coming uh, they are having some basic properties of radiation and uh, we need to know all these uh, fundamental principles which governs uh, uh, this electromagnetic radiation uh, basically that originate either from an object or from sun and how it travel through. So the main focus uh, here is uh, like uh, the EM spectrum or EM radiation that originate from an object because after interacting with the uh, solar light or solar illumination uh, then the behavior of the object uh, will depend of course on different part of EM spectrum but then how it uh, originates one after the interaction and how it travel through the space to reach the uh, satellite based sensors that is what is more important and this is what we are going to discuss. So, for EM spectrum or EM radiation, uh, there are uh, basically four laws which governs uh, uh, the type and amount of energy uh, which is being emitted by an object. And uh, uh, that uh, in, uh, as you know in science, whenever we use word law and that means the law is used to describe a body of observations and uh, at, the, at, the, at the time. And the law is established, no exceptions have been found at that uh, contradicted. But later on might be, there are some exceptions. But the laws which we are going to discuss, uh, so far they do not have any exception. And uh, sometimes we also use a word a theory. So what is the difference between a law and theory is that the law simply describes something while a theory tries to explain why something occurs. So there is a slight difference between this that a law simply describes something while a theory tries to explain why something occurs that is based on the occurrence. Now so the first law that is the Planck's law and what it says that every object emit radiation at the all time and all wavelength at all wavelength. Now, uh, when uh, when it says that every object emit radiation, uh, it, there is one condition is that object has to have a, a temperature above absolute uh, zero, and that is uh, mm, you know uh, that is true for all objects which are present on the surface of the earth. So that is why, in short, it is said that every object emits radiation, and at all times and at all wavelengths. Now whether our sensors are capable of detecting that uh, emittance or uh, radiation, emit radiations uh, at that distance that is very important for us. As also discussed in the earlier uh, lectures or discussions that uh, uh, the thermal radiation definitely uh, reaches which is the emitted by the uh, uh, objects or surface of the earth to the satellites. But others are uh, from the reflected energy that is little different. So as we know that uh, sun also emits visible light and that is why uh, we see sunlight and uh, also it emits uh, infrared waves and ultraviolet waves. And uh, here this uh, left image of this is the sun and uh, taken at two different wavelengths of EM spectrum. The left image shows the sun emission at the wavelength in the visible range and uh, this right image which is in blue color shows the uh, these images and there is a no color in the spectral region of visible light and this is false color image is only used to aid uh, so radiation intensity at one particular wavelength and this is how it will look. So in a of course in a different wavelength the same sun looks uh, differently. So sun as we know is a like a big uh, nuclear furnace 
and it emits all sorts of electromagnetic uh, radiation and uh, some of uh, that is reaches uh, to earth like visible light, infrared waves and of course ultraviolet lights also. So that means that uh, emit radiation at all wavelengths, so does everything around us and this is what I said that every object also emits radiation because they are all above absolute zero and some emission may not be measurable amount. Sometimes it is so small in quantity that it cannot be measured and sometimes it may be measured on the ground but uh, satellites which are around 850 kilometer, I am talking about remote sensing satellites, then it is for them to very difficult to detect uh, or record uh, such emission. So, that makes uh, only limited emitted radiation reaches to the satellite. Now, further we look into this Planck's law that uh, every physical body is spontaneously and continuously emits electromagnetic radiation. This is what the Planck's law says and, uh, and the spectral radiance of uh, V B and describes the amount of energy it emits at different radiation frequencies. So, it is the power emitted per unit of the body and per unit solid angle of emission per unit frequency. So, of course, it depends on the frequency that is why frequency per unit has also come. So, Planck uh, uh, law shows uh, that the spectral radiance of a body, a body of frequency V at uh, absolute temperature, this term has now come here at absolute temperature T is given by VV. V and T equal to uh, this uh, which has been given here. So, where KB, where KB is the Boltzmann constant, H, uh, H here, H is the Planck's constant and C is the speed of light which has been used here uh, in the medium whether material or vacuum. So, this uh, 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 the VV that is the spectral radiance of a body B uh, which is uh, depending on the uh, um, uh, depending on the V and uh, temperature T uh, will have uh, uh, such a uh, formulation. Now, further uh, this spectral radiance can also be uh, expressed or in this uh, Planck law uh, per unit wavelength uh, lambda instead of per unit frequency. So, we know that uh, these are related, inverse related rather that wavelength and frequency, more wavelength, less frequency, uh, less wavelength, more frequency. So, in case uh, that is there, then we can write uh, V lambda, lambda t instead of V and uh, then uh, we replace V with the lambda. So, where k v again the same k v Kv is the Boltzmann constant, H is the Planck constant as was in the previous formula and uh, C is the speed of light in the medium whether material or vacuum. So, this is how the spectral radiance is governed through this uh, Planck's law. And uh, if we want to uh, go through uh, now through these uh, different uh, spectral radiance curves of uh, at different temperatures along with the wavelength which we are having on the x axis, spectral radiance uh, are here. Then what we see that uh, uh, at, uh, at temperature 5000 K that is about the temperature of the sun, then uh, here we get the maximum light or this, uh, this peak comes in the visible part of EM spectrum which is what we are seeing. Whereas, if we go uh, towards lower temperature, uh, like instead of 5000, if we come to the 4000, then there is a shift in the peak towards higher wavelength. Further, when we go for 3000 curve, 3000 uh, Kelvin curve, again there is a shift. So, as you can see that there is a shift of uh, these peaks towards the uh, longer wavelength. This, uh, uh, this is of course, is being governed by this uh, uh, by the Planck's law and what it says that uh, when you are having very high temperature, then visible light is also emitted and then peak uh, uh, will come before. That means, it can be detected at shorter wavelength uh, 
in this example, it is in the visible part. But when we go towards uh, lower temperatures, then we can detect it longer wavelengths. So, the Planck law, uh, Planck's law accurately describes that is black body radiation and uh, shown here as a family of curves as I have just discussed and the classic black curve which is this one, the classic black curve, curve di diverges from observed intensity at high frequency. So, it, uh, it is uh, completely different then what those three curves are there showing how radiated energy emitted at shorter wavelength as a blue one as increases more rapidly with temperature than energy emitted at wavelengths. So, when we move towards the longer wavelength then these peaks and that this uh, uh, then uh, these peaks are uh, shifted towards the longer wavelength. So, shorter the wavelength. So, what we can conclude now that the shorter the wavelength of radiation greater the energy of each quantum and this uh, this plays very important role in remote sensing uh, because uh, here uh, in previous uh, lectures or earlier discussions we have seen uh, or uh, discussed that lot of satellites are focusing in the visible part of EM spectrum. The reason is it is easy to design sensors because at the shorter wavelength the radiation the greater energy is available to be recorded by the sensors. But when we move towards the uh, right in this case or uh, longer wavelengths, then the energy available for the sensor to record reduces and this is all governed by the Planck's law. So, how, how it is uh, uh, implemented or uh, uh, what are the implications of Planck's law? One part I have already uh, discussed. The other basic properties of radiation is its intensity equivalent to the brightness of visible light and this may be regarded as either the number of quanta or the amplitude of electric and magnetic fields. So, when you are having high magnetic uh, high amplitudes, the more quanta at a particular wavelength, the greater the energy at is transmitted. So, that means uh, uh, at particular wavelength in the previous figure you have realized this one and the energy of a single long wavelength quantum, uh, quantum is less than that one of the shorter wavelength. We have also seen that the uh, here in this one that the spectral radiance is uh, at shorter wavelength the it is very high whereas it is very low when we go towards the longer wavelength. So, impl further implications of Planck's law is that uh, consequently more long wave quanta must fall on a detector to produce a measurable response compared with the number of short wavelength quanta uh, that produce the same response. So, this means again as I have been saying that in visible part of EM spectrum the sensors are very efficient and that is why most of these satellites, uh, remote sensing satellites are always having uh, visible sensors. But when we move towards the longer wavelength, uh, then more longer wavelength quanta must fall on a detector to produce measurable uh, response. That means, when we go for the thermal infrared that is very long uh, wavelength compared to what in the visible, then the we get, uh, we get very little energy available for measurable or available to measure by the sensor. So, that is that is why this also controls a uh, less energy means also indirectly uh, for lower spatial resolution. So, all uh, many uh, remote sensing satellites and I will give you the best example from Landsat 8 which is latest and OLI series Landsat OLI series that at the visible channels you may have a spatial resolution of 15 meter like in Landsat 8 it is there. But when we move towards a longer wavelengths like in thermal channels then you end up with 60 meter spatial resolution because in order to in order to get sufficient energy registered by a sensor on board of a satellite. Uh, from 15 meter resolution in thermal channel that much energy is not available to be registered or measurable 
measurable response compared to the uh, shorter wavelength. And therefore, in order to have that kind of energy available to the sensor, you need to cover a large ground area, comparable or comparatively large ground area. And that means lower spatial resolution, relatively lower spatial resolution. So, this is Planck's law also governs, that means it also governs the spatial resolution of uh, these sensors. Uh, so, in general, therefore, the systems aimed at long wavelength radiation need to collect radiation either from a larger target area or over a longer time than those used for shorter wavelength. So, this last part is not possible for longer time because uh, these are moving objects. So, they cannot stay on one location for very long time. So, the, the first one is they need to collect radiation from a large target and that means a low, relatively lower spatial resolution. So, this is the biggest implication of Planck's law in the remote sensing. Further, what we see that the important consequences for the resolution of remote sensing systems and their ability to dis discriminate real objects from systematic noise. So, if we go for higher spatial resolution even in the longer wavelength, then we may have a difficulties of dis uh, discriminating different objects. So, in order to have uh, is a kind of balance between discrimination and spatial resolution, uh, you know the thermal channels are generally having lower spatial resolution. Uh, however, in uh, reality things are much more complicated than this because instruments use different kinds of detectors at different wavelengths. This is also true because for visible channels there are different detectors, for infrared channels there are different and for of course thermal infrared they are different. So, um, implications of uh, Planck's law is that it controls the uh, indirectly or directly it controls the spatial resolution of the uh, sensors. Now, the second law uh, which is also equally important like Planck's law and uh, that is the Stephen Boltzmann law. Uh, in nature as you know that all processes that generate radiations are related some way and they, how they are related with the temperature of the body which is emitting it. So, more the temperature you may get the more emission less the temperature less emission. So, all matters in the inverse including on the surface of the earth that even in the near perfect vacuum, vacuum are above absolute 0 this point we have already discussed and emit some form of radiation no matter how small amount, but they will emit because, uh, uh, because they are all are above absolute temperature and uh, just how much is emitted and the range of its wavelength is a complex function both the temperature and the nature of the body itself. So, uh, this matter or materials capable of absorbing all electromagnetic energy that it receives an emitting radiation perfectly according to its temperature is known as black body. And you know this is a theoretical uh, concept about the black body and uh, no substance or material on the surface of the earth is a, a behave like a black body. It cannot because whatever the radiation it is uh, receiving may not uh, it may not emit all that radiation and may not work as a perfect black body. N nonetheless, uh, uh, the total energy emitted by a black body, uh, it, a black body emittance that is H in W uh, watts per square meter is proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature and T in Kelvin, uh, uh, T in centigrade or Kelvin. So, this says the uh, Stephen Boltzmann's law that the total energy emitted by a black body uh, of its emittance h in watts per uh, meter square is proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature and which uh, we can write a very simple formula that emittance h black black body emittance h equal to uh, sigma uh, t power 4 and because it's a fourth power of its absolute temperature so this is how uh, we can relate that that uh, emittance equal to sigma t power 4 now, there is a third law 
which also important in field of remote sensing, uh, which governs uh, controls about uh, uh, this uh, uh, um, emittance and uh, of course, depending on the frequency that is the Wien's displacement law. And this Wien's displacement law is at any particular temperature, a black body emits radiation with a range of wavelength. Because in earlier in, uh, in, the, in this discussion today, in earlier part we have discussed that a, a, bo a, a material or objects on the surface of the earth are emitting energy all the time in all wavelength. So, however, uh, this uh, absolute temperature determines which wavelength transmits. So, higher the temperature that uh, this uh, might be at a different wavelength, lower the temperature that emittance might be at different wavelengths. So, absolute, it is a absolute temperature which determines the wavelength transmits the maximum amount of energy and this dominant wavelength that is lambda m in micrometer is given by Wien's displacement law which is lambda m equal to 2898 upon t. So, this is how the Wien's uh, displacement law. This part we have touched little bit, but at that time we did not mention deliberately about the Wien's displacement law that is coming that when we move towards the shorter wavelength, these curves and uh, the peaks get smaller and shifted from a, a, a lower uh, wavelength to higher wavelength. So, at temperature as temperature increases, the total energy emitted rises very rapidly and the wavelength carrying most energy becomes shorter. So, this is how the visible energy is having a this is a 6000 Kelvin curve and it is having the maximum emittance at that time. So, as temperature increases, energy emitted rises very rapidly and wavelength carrying most energy becomes shorter. So, it is at the shorter wavelength. When we go for uh, lower temperatures, then things shif uh, get shifted towards the longer wavelength. So, the shape of the curve uh, relating emittance to wavelength is important as we can see on this uh, uh, figure right and it stems from both the Stephens Boltzmann's and uh, Wien's laws. So, these controls, this is the temperature of the earth here which is the three, 300 Kelvin and these are the lamps incandescent lamps temperature which is around uh, 3000 K and the sun's temperature is around 6000 or 5000, 6000 K here. So, uh, because that is the maximum uh, emittance is coming and that is why it is getting detected at shorter wavelength and this is, is all governed by and the shifting uh, or displacement of peaks is governed by Wien's displacement law. What are the implications? Uh, that for any given temperature, uh, there is a minimum wavelength of radiation because all objects are emitting all the time depending on the wavelength. So, minimum wavelength of radiation, a nearby wavelength of maximum emittance and a long tail towards longer wavelength. This is what we are seeing in case of say uh, 6000 or 4000 that tail is becoming longer, but this peak reaches earlier. So, for any temperature, there are different temperatures marked here as you can see here, there is a minimum wavelength, minimum wavelength of radiation and the nearby wavelength of maximum emittance and a long tail towards the longer wavelength. This is what we see. So, <clears throat> the bodies which are emitting less, uh, uh, having less temperature will emit at longer wavelength. Thus, a, uh, what we can say at this stage that uh, a black body at 6000 Kelvin that is the sun's temperature does not uh, emit radiation with wavelength shorter than 0.1 micrometer. <clears throat> so, it does not emit here and has energy peak at 0.5 micrometer as you can see here. So, this is having maximum and in that part of EM spectrum which is the visible and spatially is, uh, is green, but emits all wavelength beyond that up to up to 100 microns. So, the curve ends here. So, uh, the emittance is there, the peak is in the visible part by the sun. Now, the third law or uh, sorry fourth law 
that is last last law which uh, we discuss in this uh, lecture is the Kirchhoff's law and which says that any gray object other than a perfect black body because all the natural objects are generally gray in the, uh, not by color but by because of black body reference in that reference so which receives radiation disposes of a part of its reflection and transmission and this uh, the absorbity reflectivity and transmissivity uh, these are are all each less than or equal to unity so this is how that uh, because we don't have any perfect black body available this is the only theoretical part so which receives radiation gray objects uh, they disposes of a part of it in reflection and transmission so this uh, further absorbity reflectivity and transmittivity are each less than or equal to unity so uh, you may get 100% absorbity but uh, generally it is not there otherwise it would be a uh, perfect black body or 100% reflectivity that is also not there so that is why less than or equal to unity now how it can uh, we can define as kirchhoff's law that uh, uh, that ab absorbity a of a substance for radiation of a specific wavelength lambda is equal to its emissivity that is e so a lambda equal to e lambda so the absorbity at particular wavelength is equal to emissivity at that particular wavelength so for the same wavelength we are talking here as a given by this uh, formula very simple one that uh, that absorbity uh, lambda equal to emissivity lambda now what is the uh, what are the implications of uh, kirchhoff's law that if we want to measure a particular constituent in the atmosphere for example maybe water vapor we need to choose a wavelength that is emitted well by water body otherwise we wouldn't detect it uh, recall uh, a discussion held in earlier lecture especially when i have been discussing about the Uh, you know these spectral curves responses there it matters so different objects will give you peak at different locations so wherever it, they are giving the peak in the spectral curve that is the best uh, band or channel to choose if you want to study that particular thing so here if i take the example of vegetation then vegetation in infrared discussed earlier that will have the maximum reflectance so that means infrared channel are generally suitable for studying vegetation the same way if i want to study the water vapor which is available in the atmosphere then i need to choose going through those spectral curves i need to choose that that channel which is having uh, that water vapor having maximum emittance by the water vapor and here we are talking about thermal channel vegetation is a infrared example however since water vapor uh, readily emits at all chosen wavelengths so it is al also really uh, uh, readily absorbs radiation at this wavelength which is going to cause some problems measurement wise if uh, uh, you know the if it is uh, you know absorbing radiation and also it is uh, you know Uh, absorbing radiation and also emitting radiation at the same wavelength then there might be some problem so the choosing a correct band uh, for a particular study is very very important and this uh, can be un understood uh, easily by using uh, uh, kirchhoff's law as we have discussed that a that is the absorbity lambda equal to e lambda and this lambda has to be the the same wavelength if i am uh, seeing absorbity at uh, visible channel then i am looking the emissivity in visible channel but emissivity in visible channel will not be there so the thermal channel then both has to be at the same wavelength then only this 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 will fall true so this brings to uh, end of this discussion about the laws which governs uh, Uh, the emittance how it reaches to the sensor how it is recorded in the sensor and how different objects uh, starting from a black body to uh, 
grey body or a natural objects how they behave and all this can be understood very well by using these four laws. Thank you very much.